Okay, everyone. Just about ready to start. I can tell I've got some visitors already. Well, there we go. The seven elements for choosing happiness in a marriage or an intimate relationship. We've got a couple more minutes before um, 8 o'clock, but I'm here in the Red Room welcoming you all. with my Starbucks. Welcome to the Red Room, everyone. It's um, Wednesday, the first Wednesday in August 2010, and I'm happy to be here talking this evening about the sixth of the six internal components of a marriage relationship. And here's the um, model for my designer marriage, the kind of marriage that I want you to to be able to design for yourself. And this is on my website um, in the area about marriage. Um, so if you haven't already, grab the um, um, download that's on your screen and print it out so that you can follow along and do this, this little quiz that's on the first page for you and for your marriage. Okay. Good evening. I'm Heather Carlisle, and it's my delight to welcome you to the Red Room this evening. We're talking tonight about creating happiness in your marriage, in your intimate relationship. And um, you'll see the download on the side of your screen there that you can print for yourself and use this quiz. So these are the seven practices of happiness. Now, Practices means that this is a skill that can be practiced and built. Just like you're not much of a musician usually unless you practice, unless you learn the scales, the keys, how to read music, how to manage the instrument that you're playing. It's the same thing with a marriage. 
it's like playing an instrument and as a, a husband or a wife or a man or a woman in an intimate relationship how we are affects the other person not to say that what I do is trying to control and change Jack, but that how I am, how I feel, how I talk to him, how I treat him influences him and creates the part of the relationship that I'm responsible for. So creating happiness is our responsibility. Well, you know, that's after the love cocktail wears off in the beginning of the relationship when you're so hot and obsessed with each other and it's divine well then after that wears off we're responsible for practicing and creating the good things that go into a deep mature substantial designer marriage so this I've um, separated out from the other things that I teach on marriage that this sixth component is the practice of happiness and you know happiness it's not a feeling and yet we feel happy it's not a thought and yet we think happily it's not really part of your body and yet our body feels happy it's more it's all of those and more so I think of happiness as the component that's built on top of all of the rest and it demands a healthy person and that we grow ourselves in healthy ways because the previous pieces that we talked about first is know and share yourself I'm going from what's inside the heart now know and share yourself your personality um, and hopefully you're confident and have a sense of purpose that you're healthy yourself number two that you share common values standards um, priorities things that are really meaningful to you Number three, that you're best friends. And of course, the top component of best friends is that you have great communication because best friendship is founded on sharing each other, sharing everything with each other. Number four, emotional intimacy, which has to do with emotional intelligence and opening your heart and communicating in ways that are safe and emotionally intelligent, which means without disrespect. The fifth is the romantic bond, which is the chemistry, um, the sense of really being attracted to each other, the sexual part of your relationship. That was last week. And then this week, the sixth part, your happiness together. So the first page, I have a beautiful quote that I wanted to share with you, and I'll read it, by Edmund de Goncourt, that Frenchman, obviously. Today I begin to understand what love must be, if it exists, and we all believe that it exists, we all want to live it and love it and have it um, close to us. When we are parted, we each feel the lack of the other half of ourselves. We are incomplete, like a book in two volumes of which the first has been lost. That is how I imagine love to be, incompleteness in absence. Now, ask me any questions you want, but that particular quote speaks to some people where they're saying, well, wait a minute, I don't want to be needy. I don't want to be incomplete without somebody else. I'm a complete and whole person. And this quote speaks to how I think of human beings. And I think I've shared this with you before, but to reiterate, we are a whole man and a whole woman, or a whole woman and a whole man, or two people, two whole people in a relationship, and that um, the relationship completes us. So that yes, this is a whole individual, but a marriage or an intimate relationship is necessary for most of us for our health and happiness, which means Without Jack, I am incomplete. There are roads that I cannot journey down unless I'm with him. There are parts of myself that I could not know, that I could not discover, that I continue to discover only because I'm married to Jack and because uh, we love each other. So there are parts of me that I could not have and therefore I was incomplete without him. When I'm away from him, 
I'm not needy, I'm not scared, I'm not, you know, lost, but he's like a magnet. I always want to come back to where he is, where he is, is my home. And so I love this quote because of that. <clears throat> if you have worries about that, or if you agree with me, or if you have questions about it, please type to me. I love it when you, um, when you communicate with me and ask questions. So here are, this is a list of traits of happy couples. How many of these do you have in your marriage or your relationship? And are there any missing for you now? So desire for happiness. Some people don't want happiness. I don't know about you, but I do. Sometimes I'm not very much in touch with that because a lot of my life I was too serious and um, there wasn't much happiness. So I've had to practice happiness. And certainly with my life and with Jack, there's never a day when um, happiness isn't natural. Um, belief that we can be happy together. Now, various detriments happen in one or both of the individuals where they decide that there's not enough here or they can't be happy here. And I'll have to tell you, the new statistic about marriage relationships is that when a couple starts talking about divorce, if, and if they do their work, if they go to see a marriage counselor and take some classes, educate themselves, and then practice it in their relationship with each other, after five years, if they hang in there and do the work, after five years, only 12% divorce. The rest of them are either happy or very happy. So, belief that we can be happy together. And sometimes when a couple comes to me in my private practice, I'm the one that says, I believe in your relationship. They're saying, well, I, I love this person, but it's not here. Well, I love this person, but if it doesn't change, I'm gone. And I'm saying, well, since you love each other, we can do this. I believe in your marriage, and if you want to do the work, we can do it. And it's true. Um, third thing, commitment to our happiness. Sometimes it's a commitment to our home. Sometimes it's a commitment to co-parenting. Sometimes it's a commitment to save money. Sometimes it's a commitment to um, just indulge and play. Is it a commitment to your happiness? Making sure each other are happy. Doing, going the extra mile um, to do something that makes your beloved know that he or she is loved and that you're happy with them. You know what the simplest thing is? And Jack taught me this, a smile. I never smiled as much in my whole life, I think, as I've done in the first few years with Jack. It's so easy to smile because I know he loves me and I know he believes in our happiness and in me. And um, it's, it's the simplest and yet most difficult thing, isn't it? So smiling is a belief in we are happy and a commitment to our happiness. Goodwill toward my partner. Goodwill. I just got off the phone with a lady and she said she's looking at herself and saying she's too grouchy and she's too negative with her husband. She doesn't know how to stop it. And this is exactly what she's sensitive to. She knows in some part of her being that she needs to have goodwill towards her husband and um, not sure why she doesn't right now. Well, you and I know, you may know her, but I do know that probably there are hurts there that haven't been grieved, or there is forgiveness. Some way there's a block and frustration or anger that's in the way, and we know what to do about that. Focus on positive aspects of my partner and our relationship. Now, isn't it simple sometimes? You know, who knows what the trigger is or what our mood is, Sometimes we tend to focus on what's wrong or what's feeling bad or what we don't like and uh, displace our time, displace our mental time and our mental attitude with complaints or envy or grouching or whining to ourselves. I don't like whining and sometimes I do it, which I think is why I don't like it a lot because <laughs> um, it looks me in the mirror. Um, so we want to focus on the positive aspects of our partner and relationship, knowing that we're all just human. We have 
mistakes that we make and imperfections, and yet sometimes it's harder for us to focus on the positives in ourselves than it is on our partners. So think about that one for yourself. Um, gratitude that we have each other. You know, saying thank you and feeling thank you and thinking thank you seems to be a small thing. You know, we teach our little kids how to say please and thank you. And yet, there's nothing like gratitude. And these things that we're talking about tonight, these seven practices of happiness, again, to say, this is what I call the trump cards, kind of like grad school in relationships. Because if this comes from practice, which means we have to do it, the praxis. It doesn't just happen. It's not a concept. And it doesn't develop just because the two of you love each other. It's something that we do, like a discipline or a practice or um, a conscious choice. And um, gratitude that we have each other. Gratitude is not a thought. It's not a feeling. It's not um, a sense in our bodies. It's a larger concept than the things that we've been talking about. And 